Coming up next, if you love to laugh, then clock in with Mickey and the gang for a half hour of non-stop fun at the Mouse Factory. And now, Mickey Mouse proudly presents The Mouse Factory. I'm Special Agent Jonathan Winters, here to conduct a full-scale investigation into the space program at the Mouse Factory, just as soon as I pass security clearance on this funny little mouse time clock. Stand back, clowns, please. Please. Oh, not you, Snow White. Over here. Quickly. Be very careful. When I put this in here, it, it might be a trap. Do you understand? You okay? Hmm? Hold on to me. <laughs> about to visit the workshop of Professor Eric Antiquity, grandfather of rocket propulsion and the world's oldest living astronaut. Uh, Professor Antiquity, uh, would you like to tell us what you're working on? Huh? Huh? I say, would you like to tell us what you're working on? Oh, yes, I'd be only too happy to. Hi, it's either an interplanetary veritable weather scope or it's a steam-powered can opener. Huh? I, I can't remember which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Say, yeah. Professor, um, huh? what sort of machine is that? Oh, this. Why, my, my half-brother and I put this together. It has to suck dandelions out of the ground. The darnest thing, it's got yellow all over here. That's because of the dandelions. Oh, all that work makes me kind of dizzy. I think I'll just, I think I'll just, oh, what did I come over here for? Hmm? Um, you were going to sit down. What? Oh, yes, I... I think I'd better sit down first. Yeah. I I don't think I've I've seen a chair like that. Oh yes. Why this is a little invention of mine. It's a rocket powered rocking chair. Why do that enough times it'll set you free. Yes. I've got a big order from from retirement city. <laughs> when did you uh, first become interested in rocket propulsion? I, my mother first got me interested when I was, I was just a little tight. She attached Roman candles to my formula. You might remember her. She was the first lady to fly. She lashed 175 pigeons to her arms. Got a running start. She's right near a stone quarry. Some kid come from out of nowhere, throw a box of popcorn in there and she... She was out of it. It was all over. Just like that. What was your first experience with rocket travel? Well, I think I've still got some movies from my early experiments. You over there with a funny dog collar. You shape up or ship out. I'll throw a box of fleas at you. Yeah, you start that automatic stereoptical. Be quick about it. I'll put you back at the home. The boat was doing fine until the sharks got to it. Then I fooled around with four-wheeled rocket-powered contraptions. When the big boys in Detroit saw what progress I was making, they didn't do a thing about it. Most of them thought I was bent funny in the head. I attached rockets to my first bike, but I never got it up in the air. It burned like a cheap cigar. Frankly, Professor, we're here to check out the rumor that you were actually the first astronaut to probe outer space in your own rocket. Well, that's right. I got a government grant from Cal Coolidge to explore the moon. It's funny President Coolidge never mentioned it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. 
He never said much about nothing for my money. Hey, see, I got this government allotment of $40 to build a spaceship. $40? Yeah. A lot of the help had to work for nothing. I used the neighborhood women to lend a hand. There must be a dozen of them from the local, local dance hall. Uh, little funny ringlets for hair and their little strange costumes on. They use them here to get the rocket up in the air. Fantastic, Professor. But there's no pictures of your return flight. <laughs> Professor Antiquity. Yeah. Well, the appropriations ran out. We used up the $40 getting there. But how did you get back from the moon? Ah, Tinkerbell. As luck would have it, she was in the neighborhood, and she has a lot of compassion. She just sprinkled a little happy dust, and we came back together. She's around here somewhere. Hey, Tink, Tink, we got company. Oh, 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 that's enough of it. That's enough of it. Chester. Chester, are you in there? No, I'm not, Daddy. Don't lie to me, kid. Why aren't you outside playing baseball like other little boys? Because I'm not like other little boys, Daddy. Yeah, that's what your last babysitter said just before she disappeared. Anyway, you weird kid. Dinner in five minutes. Daddy called me a weird kid. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. That's bad manners for Daddy to call me weird. Bad, bad. Now I can go see my little friends who live way out there on Venus and Jupiter and Mars and a lot of other far out places. Yeah. Shh. I'll let you see them too. If you don't tell my daddy. <laughs> Uh-oh. Snow breath teeth clickers. He's very dangerous. Boy, a couple of Venus hugger uglies. Don't tickle the big Venus horsey, or he'll squeeze you with his footsie. Someone poked their eyes out. Look at the little naked Jupiter man, and his big brother, and his daddy. See the Neptune blob flowers do a trick? That's fun. Searchlight birdies are looking for Din Din. The six foot blueby is getting sunburn all over his body. Look at the Loch Ness monster. Martian lion, I'd like to pull your tongue, but you've got too many teeth. <laughs> this is a two-mouth Martian moon howler. <laughs> See the horse-mouthed horse? He ate his little brothers. I like him. You can come out now, little friend. Go away. Sometimes my little Martian nose band plays songs for me. Oh, goody. Just in time to see the meat. Look out, Earth person. The funny Martian meal 
will play tricks on your tum tum. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have lots of friends out there in space. Sometimes they come to visit me. Yes, they do. Goody, goody gun drops. Here comes someone now. Oh, welcome, little fuzzy friend. You've come all the way from Mars, and I'll bet you're hungry for a warm puppy, huh? Chester, it's time to eat. Dinner's ready. Oh, Daddy. Yes? Daddy, can I bring a little friend? Sure, kid. Oh, and Daddy. Now what? Guess what's coming to dinner? <laughs> In our continuing quest for knowledge of life in outer space, we are about to visit a little-known secret botanical laboratory somewhere deep in the Florida swamps, where research on plant life is being conducted by Dr. Virus Tenderly. Oh, hi. I don't know how you got past those two brutes with the guns, but I'm glad you're here. You know, it gets a little flaky being alone with all this flora. Are you at liberty to discuss your work? Oh, heavens no. This is all top security. Hush, hush. But you look like someone who could be trusted. Here, stop that. Stop that, you little rascals. Or you don't get any more water. Now, stop that. I'm not kidding. Oh, I tell you, you'd think they'd, they'd be a little more grateful, wouldn't you? I nurtured them from spores and seedlings. Here, here, here. Put your little tongues back in your faces. Oh. I don't think I recognize these plants. Well, these aren't what you'd call your basic burpee catalog variety. Oh, my, no. These are... Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. Here, Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn. I've called them all by names. These have been brought back by secret space probes, missions from Mars and beyond. And it's my job to nurture them, try to adapt them to Earth's atmosphere. Oh, I tell you. Oh, dear. Here, here, here. Oh, isn't that something? They're like human beings. I'm not kidding. Look at this one. Oh, they just chatter, 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 chatter. I talk to them day in and day out. You're a nice looking person. They seem to be a little dangerous to handle. Well, actually, these are the milder ones. We keep the incorrigibles back here in the garden. Come on, it's feeding time. Let's take a look. Oh, oh all right, all right, you little rascals. Come on now, keep your pedals up. We have a visitor. See how they just come to life when company drops by? <laughs> you over there, control yourself. You savage. Oh, my. I can't stand violence. Look out. It's too late. These outer space specimens absolutely thrive on Earth. So do the bugs. We've collected some very interesting crustaceans. They're still a little camera shy. How do you like our Venus rock eaters? Are they brutes? Space termites. These are my pets. The space spiders are just too much. Nature is a cruel taskmaster. See, they have their own ways of dealing with troublemakers. Get him. Oh, I can't watch. This one's a smelly smelly from Jupiter. Oh my goodness, we're in luck. One of my beauties is germinating. This is a rather gripping experience. Yourselves, you little sweethearts. Oh, keep your pedals up. Oh, are you leaving so soon? 
I was hoping you'd stick around for lunch. I, I thought I'd whip up a little salad. at the spot where several citizens have reported recently sighting the landing of an unidentified spacecraft. We talked to several of these witnesses. Are you there, madam? Here, here. Keep that thing at a safe distance, you clown. I'm church people. What do you want? I wonder if uh, we could have your name, please. My name's Maud Frickert. Were you the one who called the TV station about the UFO? I certainly was. What took you so long? Sorry about that, but uh, could you describe exactly what you saw? Well, it was the wildest experience my stepson and I have ever had. At any rate, me and my stepson, he was the boy. I don't know where the boy is. He was around here a little while ago. He was paralyzed with fear. He had the dog under his arm, and the thing, when it come down, dissolved the dog. It was gone. It was just the collar in the boy's hand. He shook up bad about that. Did uh, any of the little creatures uh, try to establish contact with you? Little creatures? Well, from the spacecraft. Oh, from the spacecraft. The man in the spacecraft was weird. I'm sure it was a man. He had f four or five feelers coming out of his head. And there was fire come out of his mouth. His hands was like vegetables. I'm not putting you on. It's the dangest thing I ever seen. The boy's still not right by the experience. Well, what we do you just intend... run around in tight circles. Excuse me, sir. Uh, you also reported the landing. Um, uh, what's your name, sir? Hellwood P. Suggins. You can bet your... Uh... Yeah, I, I sure did report the landing. Well, you heard Mrs. Fricker. Now, would you say her description was accurate? Are you kidding? That woman never has been right. Her or that boy, it's, she claims to be hers. Both of them's dingy for my money. That woman's uh, old. She's about 87 years old, and the boy is just as nutty as a fruitcake for my money. No, I, uh, I wouldn't say they, they didn't know what they was talking about. Well, would you tell us in your own words how it happened? Yeah. Uh... I was out back, uh, me and uh, about five guys that worked for me, we was out uh, plucking mushrooms out the ground. And uh, I was been over there, and uh, Ben Tubwell was right next to me, right to my right, and he said, oh, and fell back like that. And I turned around and uh, looked up in the sky there, and this, uh, there was this here machine, and the heat it'd give off was just intense. I had an instant tan, just like that. This Air Force officer appears to be in charge here at the sighting. Uh, your name, sir? Uh, Colonel Isaac Dumblefelt, United States Air Force. At okay. your service. Can you tell us uh, just what happened here, sir? Well, there were a number of things that happened. Uh, this is a typical uh, landing. Uh, we've had a lot of these things. Uh, I don't think anybody saw anything. I, I must say this. That old lady is a real ding -a -ling. She's an old chicken out of it, ready for the funny farm. The farmer? Another kook. I've got a list of kooks that won't quit. I've got over 55,000 pages on kooks that see these things all the time. Well, is this the first actual landing that the Air Force uh, is not validating or is validating? What do well, you think? Well, let me say this. I don't know who you are. I don't care. Uh, we've had over 65,000 uh, sightings in the past year. That's in, in 1971 alone from kooks, all of them kooks. The Air Force uh, clears all this. I've written over 27 books. I'm an authority. I'm an authority on almost everything. When you're a colonel, you are. I wish I could be humble, but I can't. I see. Now, there's a rumor 
that the Martians abducted your secretary. Now, would you care to comment on that, Colonel? Yes. This hit me very hard indeed. That girl, um, bless her heart, uh, Bessie Tebwell was with me 25 years. A wonderful woman, a little heavy set, but we're with me anyway. And uh, I went across the street to have a double ice cream cone, and I'd come back with the cone, or part of the cone fell out. A kid rolled me for half of it. And um, I came across uh, the street and uh, across into the meadow there where they said the uh, saucer was, and uh, she was abducted by these creatures. It was unfortunate. And yet it was fortunate, in a, in a matter of speaking, because her vacation was due uh, tomorrow. So she's out in outer space. She always said that uh, she wanted to go someplace out of this world. <laughs> well, she's out now. <laughs> secretary is back now and working on a book about the whole terrible experience. Hey, you look like one of those dreadful little creatures. Mm-hmm. You better come along with me. I'm taking...